I had studied before the exam. Yo había estudiado antes del examen. You had studied. Tú habías estudiado. He or she had studied. Él, ella había estudiado. We had studied. Nosotros, nosotras, habíamos estudiado. You had studied. Vosotros, vosotras, habíais estudiado. They had studied. Ellos, ellas, habían estudiado. Had studied, had worked, had written, had thought are examples of what tense of the verb in English. Past perfect tense. All right, so it's correct. It's past perfect tense. So if you are going to use had plus the past participle of the verbs, then we are going to use this past perfect tense. What about in Spanish? How do we call past perfect tense? Do you have an idea? Lo siento, profe. No tengo ni idea. No tienes ni idea todavía. So we call this as preterito plus cuam perfecto. Ooh. Can you say it again? Preterito plus cuam perfecto. Yeah, it's correct. It's preterito plus cuam perfecto. So for today, guys, we are going to study again another past tense in Spanish. So please join us and let's get started. Hello guys, welcome back to our humble abode, BLDG Productions. Alright, so for today we are going to study again another type of past tense in Spanish and that is the past perfect or Preterito plus cuam perfecto. So it's somewhat difficult to pronounce, so it's preterito plus cuam perfecto. Alright, so that is the past perfect in Spanish. Alright, so how do we use or when to use this past perfect or preterito plus cuam perfecto in Spanish? Alright, so you have to listen to this. So this type of past tense is used to express two actions that happened in the past. Okay, so we use it to express a past action previous than another past action. So we consider two past events to be able to express correctly this past perfect or preterito plus quam perfecto. All right, so to have an idea or a clearer idea about this uh, type of tense, the past perfect tense in Spanish, let's take for instance an example. Okay, let's take for instance three events. Let's take in 2000, in 2010, and 2021. Alright, so to have a clearer picture when to use el preterito plus cuam perfecto in Spanish, we have to consider this. So let's take for instance in 2000, in 2010, and 2021. So in 2000, I study Spanish. In 2010, I arrive here in Spain. In 2021, I'm going to tell you what happened in 2000 and 2010. So, we're going to say, I had studied Spanish before I went to Spain. Alright, how do we say that in Spanish, Lucrecia? Yo había estudiado español antes de llegar a España. Yo había estudiado español antes de llegar a España. Alright, so... The preterito plus one perfecto there is había estudiado. Okay, another action there is when she arrived here in Spain. So there are two past actions in this sentence. Okay, had studied Spanish and when she arrived here in Spain. Alright, so había estudiado y antes de llegar a España. So this is an example of preterito plus quam perfecto. Now, how do we form? How do we form the verbs to be able to show the past perfect in Spanish? Let's try this. So, how do we show the past perfect tense in Spanish? O el preterito plus quam perfecto. So, we are going to use the auxiliary verb haber. So, haber means has or have in English. But we are going to conjugate it in its imperfect past tense. 
plus the past participle. So that is our guide, aware in its imperfect past tense, plus the past participle. Let's try to conjugate an AR ending verb in its imperfect past. All right. To speak, hablar. I used to speak. Hablaba. You used to speak. Hablabas. He or she used to speak. Hablaba. We used to speak. Hablabamos. You used to speak. Hablabais. They used to speak. Hablaban. Let's try to conjugate an ER or IR ending verb in its imperfect past. For example, to eat, comer. I used to eat. Comía. You used to eat. Comías. He or she used to eat. Comía. We used to eat. Comíamos. You used to eat. Comíais. They used to it. Comían. All right. So to form the imperfect past, okay, of regular uh, verbs a r n e r they end with aba o ia. Okay. What about for this verb auxiliary verb haber? All right. So we are going to conjugate the auxiliary verb haber because this is what we need to be able to express past perfect o preterito plus cuam perfecto. So the verb haber means has or have. Then if we are going to translate that in Spanish in the past perfect, it's just like had. Okay. So I had studied, you had studied. All right. So the verb haber ends with er. Now, how are we going to conjugate its imperfect past? Since this is what we need to be able to show the past perfect tense in Spanish. All right. I had. Yo había. You had. Tú habías. He or she had. Él, ella había. We had. Nosotros, nosotras habíamos. You had in plural form. Vosotros, vosotras, habíais. They had. Ellos, ellas, habían. Alright, so we are going to use these conjugations okay, of the verb haber in its imperfect past tense to be able to express el preterito plus cuam perfecto. Había, habías, había, habíamos, habíais, habían plus the past participle of the verb, all right? So let's take some examples. Now, before we proceed with the examples or sentences, okay, of the preterito plus quam perfecto, we are going to recall how to form the past participle in Spanish. Let's start with the regular verbs, los verbos regulares. For example, to speak. Hablar. It's past participle. Hablado. Okay. What about to learn? Aprender. It's past participle. Aprendido. And what about to live? Vivir. And it's past participle. Vivido. All right. Hablado, aprendido, vivido are examples of past participle or participio pasado in Espanol. Okay. So this is very easy. So for AR ending verb... Okay, the past participle ends with ado. For the ER and the IR regular verbs, they end with ido. All right. So we have to focus more on the irregular verbs, los verbos irregulares, because they totally change their spelling when we are going to form their past participle. So let's take for instance the verb to open, abrir. Abierto. To say, decir. Dicho. To write, escribir. Escrito. To do, hacer. Hecho. To fry, freír. Frito, freído. So, freído is already accepted by RAE, which means Real Academia Española. So, normally we use frito, the past participle, but this is already accepted, the verb Freído, the past participle, freído, because we, they, the people used to say it already. So it is already accepted by the RAE or RAE, which is the Real Academia Española. Okay, so another one is to print, imprimir. Okay, to print, imprimir. Impreso, imprimido. Imprimido is already accepted also by RAE. Alright, to die, morir. Muerto. To put, poner. 
puesto. To provide, proveer. Provisto, proveído. Provisto and proveído. So, proveído is already accepted by RAE also. Alright? To subscribe, suscribir. Suscrito. So, don't forget to subscribe, a suscribir. Alright? To see, ver. Visto. And what about to return, volver? Vuelto. Alright, so these are examples of irregular verbs in their past participle. But do you know, guys, that there are many irregular past participles that have to and cho endings? So let's find this out. So just like what I've said earlier, there are many irregular past participles that have to and cho endings. So T-O-N-C-H-O, to and cho endings. For example, the verb broken. Roto. Dead. Muerto. Written. Escrito. Opened. Abierto. Returned. Vuelto. Said. Dicho. Did or made. Hecho. Predicted. Predicho. Undone. Deshecho. And satisfied. Satisfecho. Let's try to analyze some sentences in the past perfect tense o preterito plus quam perfecto. The first. All About Lou had already left when Mama Vebs arrived. All About Lou ya había salido cuando llegó Mama Vebs. So there are two actions in the past in this sentence. Had already left, ya había salido, and when Mama Vebs arrived, cuando llegó Mama Vebs. So we are going to use also the past perfect or preterito plus quam perfecto in this case because we are relating to past actions. Two past actions, I should say. Another one. The second one would show a plus quam perfecto with pronouns. Example, Munang Ning got married before she turned 30. Munang Ning se había casado antes de cumplir 30 años. Alright, so in this case, okay, the infinitive of the verb Casado is casarse. This is an example of a reflexive verb. So we are going to use se había. So we don't only use había because casado, its infinitive is casarse, which is a reflexive verb. So we are going to say se había casado. Alright? Had the vloggers eaten before the live streaming? Habían comido los blogueros antes de la emisión en directo? ATV Channel still hadn't cooked dinner when her mom arrived. Todavía, ATV Channel no había preparado la cena cuando llegó su madre. I had already said it thrice. Ya lo había dicho tres veces. My alter ego had never seen it. My alter ego nunca lo había visto. Alright, so I hope you learned something today with our lesson. So is it easy to form or express past perfect tense in Spanish, Lucrecia? Más o menos, profe. Más o menos. Alright, so if you know our guide, había, habías, había, habíamos, habíais, and habían, plus el participio pasado, then you know already how to express el preterito plus one perfecto in Spanish. Alright, so that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you once again in our next basic Spanish tutorial. Thank you so much. Adios. Adios. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. Ciao. Ciao.